So today, in the red corner, we have George Eliot. And in the blue corner, we have Mary Elizabeth Braddon. And we're gonna see which of these two very famous female Victorian authors is better. So this is the second video I've done like this. I compared Jane Austen and Thomas Hardy a few months ago. And in honor of Victober, yes, I know that we are now in November. This is slightly late going out. Um, in honor of Victober, I am comparing these two fabulous Victorian authors. As before, I am referring to two very specific books that I have read to compare the two. And so for George Eliot, I read The Mill on the Floss and for Mary Elizabeth Braddon, I read Lady Audley's Secrets. So, <clears throat> preliminaries. These two books maybe aren't the best to pit these authors against and I'm already planning to do a round two between these authors next Victoria where I will compare two different books by them to see if the result is the same. But today we are talking about these two. So let's talk about Mary Elizabeth Braddon first, shall we? So Mary Elizabeth Braddon was born in Soho in London and she had a somewhat scandalous life similar to her sensation novel Lady Audley's, Audley's Secret. So she was only five years old when her parents separated because of her father's infidelity and as she grew up she then met a man who was married with five children, moved in with him, pretended to be married to him, had six children with him and he was also a publisher which uh, I think was part of the reason she became such a prolific author. Now, I think most people are aware of Mary Elizabeth Braddon's most famous novel, Lady Audley's Secret, which we will talk about today, but she wrote 80, yes, 80 novels. Uh, she wrote some short stories as well, uh, but she was a extremely prolific author, churning the books out, so, um, I am very looking, very much looking forward to trying some more work by her next year. Lady Audley's Secret was one of her first novels and the one that sort of rocketed her onto the bestsellers list uh, and that was published in 1862. So then if we look at George Eliot, she had a very different upbringing. So where Braddon was raised in the city, Eliot was very much raised in the countryside in Nuneaton in Warwickshire. Her father was a mill owner and so the mill on the floss itself is almost semi-autobiographical in nature. George Eliot was a pen name, her real name was Mary Ann Evans and she wrote seven novels over the course of her lifetime as well as some short stories but she was also a poet and a translator so which was quite rare for the time because she was very well educated and went to a boarding school and that also features in the novel. So let's compare these two and we are going to have the same running order as last time. So I'm going to compare five key areas and those areas are setting, supporting characters, main character, plot and writing style. I will mark all of these out of 10 for both novels and then we will see at the end what, which author I think was better. So starting with setting and we will start with The Mill on the Floss. So this book was set in the countryside at Dorcott Mill on the River Floss. And so, as you can imagine, we have this beautiful countryside setting and most of the book, 90% of the book takes place here. Some of it takes place at some boarding schools, uh, but really it is focused around this river and the mill and the family. And so I thought the, right, the, the setting was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. I actually could have done with a little bit more description of the mill and the floss. But overall, I really, really liked it. So eight out of 10. On the other hand, Lady Audley's Secret was set in a couple of different locations. Some of it took part in London, some of it took part in the south of England, but the majority of it took part at Audley Hall in Essex, which is just a skip and a half away from where I live. So I was uh, very pleased to see some well-known locations coming up within this book. But what I really, really loved about this was the description of Audley Manor itself. It's sort of described as almost a like a rabbit run with secret corridors and and the gardens were really well described as well. And I just, it was absolutely what I wanted. I could picture myself there. I could picture the eeriness 
when it was dark and rainy and stuff was happening. And so this one just pipped, pipped me on the floss with regard to setting. And so this gets a nine. So moving on to supporting characters and Mill on the Floss is very much supported by the family of Maggie. Maggie is the main character and then we have her brother Tom. We have a couple of other ma male characters that are key to the plot and her mother and father and aunts. I found the supporting characters quite vast and convoluted. I found it a little bit tricky to keep keep track of who all these aunts and cousins and everything else was. Uh, that said, I did really like Maggie's mother, father and brother. I thought they were really well fleshed out. I really felt like I had an understanding of where they were coming from. And so I did like those characters. I also liked um, the character of Philip, who has a disability within this book. And I thought he was fantastically written as well. So I did overall really like those characters. And so I would give supporting characters an eight. For Lady Audley's Secret, uh, again, the supporting characters are sort of the family. So the main character is Robert Audley, who is the nephew of uh, Mr. Audley, the, the owner of Audley Manor. So I suppose we have two main characters in this because we have Robert Audley and we have Lady Audley, but it's very much told from Robert Audley's perspective. So if we count Lady Audley as a supporting character, I thought she was fabulous. <laughs> uh, she was dark and twisty and it, one of those characters that your like hatred grows <laughs> throughout the book uh, and I thought that was marvellous really really liked her character I felt like the father character was quite weak in his sort of temperament which I think was intentional and therefore I liked his character I thought he was well done as well and then we have the characters of the maid and Robert's friend George Tallboys, who I think probably could have done with a little more fleshing out, if I'm honest, uh, though I did very much enjoy them. But I do think that maybe Elliot had the edge on this one. So I would give Lady Audley Secret seven for supporting characters. And then we move on to main character. So in Middle of the Floss, that main character is Maggie. And we very much see Maggie grow up. We meet Maggie when she was very young and impetuous and mischievous and she very much has a passion for learning and reading and is very curious about the world and I loved young Maggie very very much. I thought she was a fantastic five star character. However as she grew she became very very self deprecating to the point of being quite irritating. I found it a little bit too moralistic, I suppose, is uh, maybe the way of describing it. But yeah, so in her adult years, I didn't really like her as character. I didn't feel like it was in keeping with her as a young girl. And so I would only give Maggie a seven. Then for Lady Audley's Secret, we have Robert Audley and Robert is very interesting. We have quite a lot of character growth from Robert from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. Robert is a lawyer, though he doesn't really do any work. He sort of just sits in London in his rooms and pushes paper about a little bit. But we see how when things are important to him, he grows and he is very dogged in trying to find out Lady Audley's secret. And I just my love of Robert Audley's character grew and grew as the novel progressed, which is really what you want from a novel, is it not? You want to learn to love these characters, and I certainly did with Robert Audley. So I would give him a nine. And then we go to plot. Plotty plot plot. So, The Mill on the Floss. <laughs> the Mill on the Floss is definitely more character driven than plot driven, which is absolutely fine. Usually I really love a character driven book. However, I found the level of exposition in this book overwhelmingly dull. <laughs> it just, there was expo exposition on exposition on exposition and I just didn't care. It hampered my enjoyment of the plot, of the characters, uh, but the plot itself was um, fine. It didn't really inspire any great emotion in me either way. 
I think the last maybe 100 pages of this book were better but to be honest by the time I got to that point I just didn't care because I was bored senseless so the the plot for this was lacking for me it wasn't focused enough on a plot um, and so only six for Mill on the Floss for plot and then we have the complete opposite the complete opposite with Lady Audley's Secret. This is very plotty. Uh, it's very fast moving. You kind of have to keep reading to find out what's going on, which is quite rare, I think, for a classic, particularly a Victorian classic, for it to move at the pace that Braddon's novel did. And there were a couple of little plot holes in it, a couple of things that maybe weren't tied up that should have been, but I enjoyed the ride so, so much. I thought it was an absolutely fantastic book to experience and so nine out of ten for plot for Lady Audley's Secret. And then we come to writing style and clearly the fact that both of these women are still prolifically published in today's day suggests that they both have a pretty good writing style and I do agree. So when it comes to The Mill on the Floss I could see moments of brilliance and sparks of utter joy from Eliot's writing. But as I sort of said in the last section, just the level of exposition and the sort of hitting you around the head with morals just really irritated me. So I'm going to give Eliot an eight. She clearly can write, but I just felt like this maybe wasn't her best novel. And from <laughs> other reviews of this book that I've seen and other comments of this book that I've seen, I think generally people would agree. And then going on to Lady Audley's Secret, uh, very similar really to the comments I had for plot. I felt like she had this extremely good way of drawing the reader in and keeping you engaged and that speaks to me of a very high quality of writing style. I also loved the descriptive nature of her writing. I love the way she write, wrote her characters. I just think that her writing style is for me and I think actually maybe a little bit ahead of its time because as I've, I've, as I've sort of said this didn't even feel like a Victorian novel it felt like it could have been written a lot later and I would wholeheartedly have believed that it was written later because of the way that the writing sort of sucked you in and so it gets a nine from me Braddon gets a nine on this one and so if I have done my maths correctly that means Mill on the Floss came in with a 37 out of 50 and Lady Audley's Secret came in with a 43 out of 50. And I think you can probably guess from the way that I've spoken about both of these books as we've gone through, Lady Audley's Secret and Mar Mary Elizabeth Braddon are absolutely my winners in this contest of Victorian writers. <laughs> Let me know if you have read both of these books and if you agree, if you've read both of these authors, but different books and you have suggestions for which I should pick up next October to compare these two ladies again. Because I do feel like if I picked different books, maybe it had been would have been a different result. So that is all I have for you today. If you missed my Hardy versus Austin, I will leave it here and I will see you all very soon with another one. Bye guys.